All right, Culture Dog, Sam Hatch here with another Laserdisc video. We're going to do another Spotlight uh, Laserdisc collection video. I am working on the uh, A through Z in my, uh, my regular collection behind me. In the meantime, feel free, if you're new to the channel, head back and maybe check out some of my previous videos. I ran through uh, my Criterion collection, my Japanese imports, my box sets, and my uh, music Laserdisc, and then as well a tour of my uh, my collection my collection of uh, laserdisc players and then also just an overview of of laserdisc in general and hanging out with a lot of uh laserdisc enthusiasts online and now i've got a couple other you know topics i'm probably going to do some one-off videos you know discussing um you know recently we had on the laserdisc forever group you know discussions about uh, proper aspect ratios and viewing the films especially films that are letterboxed within a, a four to three aspect ratio <laughs> border meant to be shown on a television from the 90s how to properly view that on a modern you know 16 to 9 hd tv and uh yeah it's a lot of interesting stuff uh there and and just a lot of interesting topics between the sound mixes and uh different transfers etc uh so i'll try and you know kind of sprinkle some of those uh in the near future uh, across the uh, across the channel as well, but in the meantime, we're gonna do a couple uh, a couple of laser disc spotlight uh, videos and then get back into the collection. So uh, bear with me a moment and uh, take a trip down memory lane. Uh, the first one I'm gonna do on this video is uh, well, I'm only doing one on this video. The first video I'm doing is Casino from 1996, and uh, I actually grabbed this recently in a lot. Uh, this is one of those releases. Uh, I hadn't picked up before, and I would usually just watch the movie on on probably like UHD or one of those kind of similar services used to show it a lot in, in HD, and I'd watch it and get, kind of thought, you know, that's a really cool flick, I should buy that, and I uh, never got around to picking up a, a Blu-ray or, you know, a DVD copy, um, but I bought a lot of maybe like 30 to 40 discs, and this came with it, and I wasn't really expecting much. I, uh, from especially from the transfer because how I had seen some a lot of noise in uh, you know Goodfellas and uh, Cape Fear again if you have some noise reduction uh, filters it kind of comes out looking pretty nice uh, so I wasn't really expecting that much pop from the picture um, but I fired it up and it's a really really nice image it's uh, very sharp and in fact I was just having a conversation online with someone about uh, the film and how it looked close to DVD and that's in a, a lot of people's uh, you know, ears pricked up, and then uh, now there's a, a call for some uh, screen caps and things like that. I'd love to be able to show you some of the screen caps uh, in video form, but again, you know, there's all these uh, rights management issues and people getting shut down for, you know, showing 20 seconds of a film, and <laughs> for some reason that equates as bootlegging, uh, but whatever. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Casino, if you haven't seen it, it's uh, roughly three hours long, and it's a yet another uh, collaboration between Martin Scorsese and Nicholas Pileggi, who wrote uh, the book that uh, uh, Goodfellas was based on. And this, again, was another true crime story uh, taking place in Las Vegas, uh, mostly during the 70s, uh, except that the name of the uh, casino was changed to the Tangiers, and the main players' names were all changed just a little bit. Uh, to protect the innocent or whatever. But uh, Robert De Niro plays uh, Sam Ace Rothstein, and uh, he's uh, that's the most fascinating thing about this and Goodfellas um, being uh, Scorsese's take on on the mob, but be, as told through the eyes of a bit of an outsider. Uh, I mean, being Henry Hill and Goodfellas. Uh, having some Irish roots, make sure that he's never going to be made. And likewise, um, Ace being Jewish in Casino, as as useful as he is to the the, the mobsters back east, he's never going to be made as well. So that's that's pretty cool. I mean, it's it's that what if you, uh, you know, the the, the non Italian, uh, you know, member of society that that still had some. Uh, you know, kind of draw or use for these mobsters. What if you were then allowed on the inside, and what would that be like? So that's a large fascination of both films, especially in the beginnings when they're told largely through narration. And this one is told through a multiple narration. So uh, Nicky Santoro, played by Joe Pesci, is uh, Ace's friend and uh, is dragged kind of into the fold as protection and, and a number of other things. And then... Uh, Ginger, played by Sharon Stone, is the complication. And that's the reason I kind of didn't always want to spin this up, this film up often as I did Goodfellas. Uh, because 
her acting is uh, Sharon Stone's acting is fine, but she's such a, a shrewish, uh, kind of obnoxious <laughs> character that you don't want to spend any time with her. Uh, so it's like, all right, well, I'm gonna see this this great establishment of Vegas and, and the mob scene in Vegas, but then I'm gonna have to deal with uh, dysfunction and. Uh, kind of domestic disturbances for like about an hour and uh, I can get that for free just walk down the street and, you know check out some neighbors see what they're up to uh, so it's one of those films you have to kind of like steal yourself to watch it uh, but that said there's a big rush in the beginning and uh, setting up you know Ace's business how he becomes part of uh, the Tangiers casino and uh, all the sketchy kind of Teamsters action behind the scenes and establishing the casino and how Ace runs it without actually being a licensed casino owner and uh, that stuff just has a lot of verb to it and again uh, Scorsese knows how to use a steady cam like nobody's business so there's a lot of motion yeah there's a lot of kineticism and just uh, you know swooping shots and, and the music is a huge part of this film much like uh, with a lot of Scorsese films uh, especially leaning heavily on the Rolling Stones um, but this taking place in the set cusp of the 70s and the 80s there's even some uh, you know cooler uh, choices like Devo uh, Whip It and uh, their cover of the Rolling Stones I uh, Can't Get No Satisfaction being key uh, moments within the film uh, so it doesn't have ultimately the same level of uh, just insane rewatchability that that Goodfellas does but on the other hand uh, there's there's a lot of interesting material in here but much like most of Scorsese's flicks as 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 great as things are and as as quickly as this situation is established where you know the mob from Kansas City is skimming money from these casinos Ace is making sure it happens and uh, Nikki is forcing people out of the casino that could be trouble um, the politics start showing up and uh joe bob briggs actually is is uh in the film as the the son of a gentleman who it's uh it's definitely in your best interest to be on the on the good side of and uh those kind of politics mixed with uh ginger being you know a wolverine of a woman and james woods super sketchy and creepy james woods in here as her former you know boyfriend slash pimp um Thing, you know, and you know it can't go well from there, and you know he can't sustain this kind of situation. It's it's these films are almost like the ultimate expression of the yin and yang uh, dichotomy. That uh, if you have stasis, it just leads to you know stagnation. Uh, so in order to you know maintain the balance, as as great as it gets, and as much as you're riding on the high, you've got to start falling back down towards where you came from at some point to kind of keep the balance of things. Uh, so yeah, casino. Yeah, that said, uh, you know, for all the, the the nasty kind of domestic disturbance <laughs> portions of the film that I don't actually want to watch, it's uh, definitely uh, a solid flick. It's interesting uh, watching some of the old reviews. It really was, I don't want to say it wasn't well received, but it was definitely a mixed reception. A lot of people I know want to see it in the theater, just didn't embrace it like they did Goodfellas. I just watched recently the Siskel and Ebert episode where Siskel despised it, essentially, and uh, Roger Ebert stuck up for it. Um if you're a Scorsese fan, you'll like it regardless, but um, it is a little uneven as uh, as just a gangster flick, but definitely worth owning. Uh, the sound, it's funny, I've got a copy of the August 1996 widescreen review in which they uh, reviewed it, and they gave the sound a 2.5 out of 5, and the picture a 5 out of 5, which uh, now I agree with. Um, but the sound is definitely heavy on... Uh, the music and the narration and there's not a lot of ambience there is a dts version of this film which i'm it's actually kind of an interesting choice to release a dts version uh because the mix isn't very dynamic with surrounds as far as i know maybe there's a lot of like casino ambience uh going on in that version the mix on this is very front heavy uh very dialogue heavy the narration is in your face and then but then again it's very decipherable uh there's nothing that you're you're kind of stretching closer and, and bending your ear to the speaker to understand uh you you're you know the story and uh it's delivered well and the music has you know, enough punch to it when it arrives and uh that's that's the name of the game it's just a lot of cool narration and a lot of good score uh, visually yeah it's great there's a lot of interesting um uh scorsese uh montage moments like the opening credits with uh, a I guess a, a, a gentleman flying through the air after a car explodes uh, and that that kind of motif 
of uh, this figure being hurled through the air by fire, uh, mixed with actual uh, you know scenes of fire and the casino lights, and kind of playing on that imagery and letting you know that for all the glitz and glamour of this world, there's going to be a lot of you know death and violence behind it because there is the notorious vice uh with the gentleman's head in it scene uh there's hammers to fingers and things like that but that stuff all is gloriously re- rendered in uh, vivid uh clarity on this uh transfer so enjoy that but i mean it looks really nice there's not a, a ton of uh you know dnr or anything like that and uh it's pretty sharp so, yeah really nice stuff in fact a lot of the scene a lot of De Niro suits, uh, that one, not necessarily, but a lot of his other suits have a lot of intricate patterns, and I noticed it wasn't driving my display crazy, trying to decipher all the, you know, the, the lines and uh, uh, intricate patterns there. So, yeah, it's a solid release, uh, definitely worth picking up. I mean, I'm guessing the DTS one you know, wouldn't hurt. I'm sure it's going to sound as good, if not a little bit better. Uh, but, yeah, it's just a fascinating trip down... Uh, uh, memory lane for you gangsters out there and uh again also a lot of that cool like soft light that uh scorsese uses on scenes uh is really interesting stylistically i know spike lee borrows that quite often uh so there's a bit of that so those scenes will look a little bit softer but uh i liked even just the the way uh the scenes when they establish the guys back east Uh, i think it it was in chicago in reality but i think kansas city was the uh the kind of mafia hub that all this money from Vegas was being funneled back to. But they have this great establishing shot of this just kind of black frame and these, you know, five guys at a table and just kind of lit from above. And uh, that's pretty impressive stuff. And again, they're they're almost like mythical. And uh, Nicholas Pelleggi and, and Martin Scorsese are certainly helping mythologize the mob. And But it's interesting, yeah, again, from the, the, the viewpoint of characters like, uh, you know, Ace, who is is never going to be one of those guys sitting at that table. He's only going to be working for them. But uh, the closer you are to them, uh, yeah, the, you get to reap the benefits. It's a, it, I always harken back to Gangs in New York when uh, Brendan Gleeson's character you know, notices that uh, Leonardo DiCaprio is spending a little bit too much time close to Bill the Butcher and... Uh, is played by Daniel Day Lewis and, and it says it is very cozy being under the the wings uh, or it's very warm under the wings of a dragon and that's what these films this and Goodfellas are like too like the closer you are to the dragon uh, the more your life is is enriched and and you know you, you've got all this these comforts and everything like that but you're in the <laughs> the wings of a dragon so death is right around the corner uh, so yeah definitely uh, worth picking up. And uh, we'll do another video. Uh, I think I might go into Ghostbusters next. So uh, catch you back here for that. And uh, thanks for all the subscriptions and comments. I'm still uh, trying to keep up on a daily basis. And uh, if you have anything you want to say, just drop it below. And I'll uh, try and uh, get back to you right away. And if there's anything in particular you want to see, any uh, Laserdisc reviews, if I have it in my collection, I'll do a spotlight video on that. And uh, we'll see you shortly. Thanks.